evening. I'd like to call the conservation and what we're seeing our first agency um to order. Uh roll call, we call the forum. Documents. Oh, all right. All right. Uh, do we have any vacancies today? You could you could seat one. One. Right, you're you're seven with two alternates. So. Okay, so we can we can see from the last time. No, no. All right, Kyle, would you like to see this time? Sure. All right. Um, and we have a new application for receipt and termination of certificates. Um, actually, the CC dash number twenty two dash seven. Maria Capriola Holder, Tom Thomas Joy, applicant for the construction of a three thousand six hundred linear foot ten foot wide concrete trail with pedestrian boardwalks or associated site improvements along the Farming River on property and right-of-way located near Terrible Road, Palmetto Street, Curtis, Patterson Parks. Madam Chair, I would um, I would just defer to Adam Kessler, who is um, Deputy Town Engineer. Mm -hmm. And we, we, we did add a couple of slides. Remember what tonight is, you're, you're receiving the application, you'll have to make a determination of significance, and then you'll schedule the public hearing for a, a future date. Step on you, you go. Uh, for the record, Adam Kessler, Deputy Town Engineer. Um, so tonight, this has been a project a long time coming, and we figured we'd give a little bit of an introduction to where it started and, and where we're going. Um, and we'll, of course, repeat all the information for public hearing. We're assuming it's going to be found as a significant activity in public interest, given that it's you know 3,600 linear feet of trail along um, Terraville Road and the Farmington River. Um, so we start at um, the intersection of Route 10, Hot Meadow and Terraville Road, uh, and the existing trail that runs along Hot Meadow. Uh, carry this trail 10 foot wide by two inch um, multi-use path. Down across the river, we'll utilize that existing concrete sidewalk on the bridge. Um, and that kind of forced us to the north side of the road. And we'll terminate the trail up at Curtis Park. Uh, the driveway, you know, for traveling towards Terraville on the left side, on the river side, um, we cross that and then end in a turnaround um, after a little bit of a boardwalk section. Uh, this project started back in, I'd say, 2014, 2015, as we started to conceptualize uh, connecting the main trail to uh, Terraville and then eventually to Bloomfield. Um, this segment is, is a key segment uh, that we see regardless of what happens to the rest of the trail uh, because it connects uh, our main trail through Simsbury uh, to Curtis Park, which is a great uh, spot for soccer fields and all, the, all that good stuff. So um, we'll be at total impacts uh, while we're here. Um, is 46,000 square feet of state wetlands. Um, that's because of the alluvial soils and the wetlands are basically all throughout the existing road. So this path is use, utilizing the existing shoulder that's along the road. So it's being, even though there's that size impacts, uh, it's already disturbed uh, land soils from the roadway construction, uh, the field construction and what have you. Um, we also have federal wetland impacts. Um, so we've submitted to various uh, agencies with, with fun acronyms um, that I'll, I'll run through in our professional and certainly uh, provide an update on that at the public hearing. Um, but we've been in front of, um, essentially the design, design kind of wrapped up around 2020, I believe. And we've been in permit um, land since then. Um, the local DOT offices has reviewed this from an encroachment standpoint because this is a state road. Um, NDDB, of course, uh, reviewed it back in 2020. Uh, we'll need to resubmit to them um, ahead of construction uh, over the next year or so just to keep current. Um, deep fisheries uh, found no significant impacts to the improvements. Um, we've been through flood management certificate process uh, because this is a floodplain and floodway where the work is occurring. 
Uh, and we're currently waiting on uh, the Army Corps to finalize uh, the comments and permits from their review. Um, that one has been, that's the last couple of months we've been working through that and it's kind of just a matter of them signing it, and sending us those, those comments. Um, the reason why we're here now, after going through all of that, um, is because we kind of knew that would take a long time and there's really no sense in coming here until we had a final alignment with total impacts. Um, we're expecting to receive that Army Corps permit soon. Um, you know, any, any week now we'll get it. Um, and then our intent is to hopefully receive funding. Um, we should receive an update in January from DOT to fund the construction of the project. Um, that would involve more DOT reviews and um, design reviews, and we'll hopefully start construction in 2024. Uh, so we're still a bit of a ways off, uh, but we figured we'd, we'd get in front of you all. And um, now that we expect no major changes to occur um, between now and construction. Uh, so we'll certainly bring back our. Um, our professionals, uh, Malone Groom, who are now SLR. Uh, they were the professionals that worked on this project. Um, they'll be here for the public hearing, should be be scheduled. And we'll be happy to answer all the questions that involve, you know, Latin names for species and stuff. Mm -hmm. So at this point, we're gonna have a full presentation at the next meeting. So tonight will be the, we won't be taking any public comments because we're not a public hearing. Um, we would have to you, I would just say, Madam Chair, you're always welcome to ask the applicant any questions that they might want to, you might have to, for them to bring back yeah. to answer at the public hearing. Okay. So you, you certainly, you know, I wouldn't get too into it no. because we want all that on the record anyway. Um, yeah. Right. But but otherwise, you know, you're, I, I think it's your job is to, to determine whether it's a significant act activity or not. Um, and then with that, of course, significant activity requires a public hearing. And we would set the public hearing. Adam and I were just talking. Um, Jen, we obviously don't have enough time to advertise for, for, for your, your meeting in two weeks. Um, January 3rd would be the next meeting. That is literally the day everybody gets back from, from everything, um, our, our holiday celebration. Um, and, and I think Adam would be open to, to, to January 17th as a public hearing date in order to kind of get us past the, uh, the holidays and, and allow for more public input. I mean, I, I think we'd hear a little bit of an outroar if we were scheduling a public hearing for, for January 3rd. I don't think that's a great idea. Yeah. And then by that time, do you think we'll have the DOT and the uh, Um, we, we should have our report by then. Um, the, uh, the DOT, we were expecting to receive a letter um, from them in early January regarding that, that funding. It's a transportation alternative set aside program that we applied for back in. 2018, 2019, uh, and I think with the influx of uh, federal dollars, um, they're, look, they're reopening that program and looking at who to fund. Um, given how advanced these design plans are, uh, reviews at uh, various agencies, it's at the top of the list from what we understand in terms of funding. Um, given all the boardwalk sections, it's not a, a small amount on my mind. Right now, we're looking at it's probably around 2.4, 2.5 million. Um, and it's a lot of it's to do with the, the two boardwalk sections that we have planned. Um, so, hopefully, by January 17th, uh, that's when the public hearing is, we'll have a lot more information. You never know. And the board book sections, I mean, they're still on the side of the road, I think. Yeah, there's, there's two sections. There's one where uh, the DOT has a culvert that runs underneath the roadway. Um, so, Is that the, yeah, that's that's the first oh, one. Sure. Um, Sorry. Ooh, where great. you see the, the dark area that swings away from the road. Um, so there's a culvert right there. And to avoid, you know, the culvert and, and that whole area, we align the boardwalk to run away from that. Um, that gets us into a little bit of federal wetlands. Uh, and the boardwalk um, system that was chosen here is using helical piles. So it's very you know, minimal impact uh, to the surrounding area. Um, I believe the substructure, superstructure of the boardwalk itself is in aluminum. 
uh, material. Uh, that was a comment we got from uh, Farmington Watershed Authority, I think, um, as well as Wild and Scenic Group. Uh, we provided comments to on the court of some of the ones that are coming through soon. Um, a lot of times with these, these types of boardwalk, and we've seen it in other sections uh, in the state, down in Lake Cheshire, where they've run multi-use path through, um, through wetlands where the helical piles are nice uh, because a lot of those systems, you can actually do a top-down construction so that you're not running the machines through the wetlands itself, you're building it and the machine's sitting on top of the boardwalk that's already made. Um, whether or not that's how we build this, I don't, I don't think we've settled on that yet, but um, the impacts are what you'd expect for a boardwalk. The second section is just after the driveway, um, as I mean, you can probably see it during a little bit of a flood, the water gets up pretty close. So right there, we have another section of boardwalk and then turn around. Um, and to be honest, we might end up value engineering that section out uh, and ending the project before the driveway, just from a cost savings perspective, depending on how much funding we get from the state for construction. Um, but right now that this is the extent of the project and our thoughts are to permit uh, the project in its entirety. So, uh, are there any plans to um, move basins? I'm sure there's quite a bit of stuff there that it shouldn't be. And also when you are going to see to ensure that, you know, it's a native mix or, you know, kind of plants mm -hmm. so that, you know, we're not then putting things in the wetlands that uh, shouldn't be there. Yeah, so that's, that's actually some of the comments we've received from uh, Wild and Scenic in regards to adding pollinators. And um, I think we're on the hook for monitoring and basis for two years after construction, mm -hmm. and, uh, give or take. Um, lots of monitoring. Can we do that in the room so that someone can hear it? Or? Yeah, I think through the scope of the project itself, there'll be uh, removals um, and with the intent of encouraging the native species to, to take root after you're done. Earlier, you, you had mentioned that. Um, ideally, this project would extend into Bloomfield. Um, what do you guys have a group that you guys were thinking of using? Um, so the right now, um, if you've driven through Terrafield, you've probably seen some constru construction out there. We're under construction for Terrafield and Bloomfield to connect with it. The trail that Bloomfield completed uh, recently. Um, to run from Curtis into Terrafield is um, you know, the most complicated section. Uh, it's been conceptualized to run along uh, Terrapil Road and then the river um, and into Terrapil. That, I mean, that's based on a master plan that was developed back in you know, 14, 15 timeframe. Um, we are just kind of getting into figuring out an alignment and how to, how to get there. Um, Krog has partnered with uh, BHV to um, not only study this gap, but other gaps in the state. Um, and that's something else we'll be getting into over the next couple of months. Uh, so in terms of running there, you know, we're not quite sure. And this project is nice just because it makes a good connection to a park. Uh, the concern I, I was having is, you know, if you follow that road and you're falling down that path, it, you know, it, we get a lot of flooding there, especially in the springtime. I wouldn't want to see it all wiped out. Right. right. We'll keep that under advisement. So this is to connect some part of um, pedestrian traffic or to um, um, pedestrian and cyclist, it's a multi 10 foot multi use path. Um, we chose you know 10 feet, uh, mostly because of the, the impacts of going any wider. Um, so it would be considered a multi use path, essentially a stub off of the, uh, the rail trail. Can the boardwalk also be connected to the 
Right, it would be 10 feet clear between uh, rails. Uh, and I think the total width is probably around 11 and a half, 12 feet. Yeah, at the rails. It doesn't connect that way. Right, right. I'll make a motion that we find this application significant and that we schedule a public hearing for our January 17th meeting. Is that our second Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, no, Madam Chair, we do not. I reviewed it, but I can look at it quickly. I have no, uh, no Asian actions. All right. So conservation issues. Um, last, at our last meeting, we discussed the, uh, the reviewing plan of conservation and development. Um, it's not a full review of the plan, the POCD at this particular time. It's hard to do it every 10 years. And this is really just an update. Right. Yes, you're on the planning department, so uh, commission. So um, I did meet with uh, Glenn Chalder uh, one day, uh, and I, I gave him my comments. I told him the preliminary but conservation. Um, did you get a chance to look at the comments? Oh, just yes. You know, that was kind of way through the, thank you, Henry, mm -hmm. way through that puppy tone. Did I do have any on it? Um, and you're very nicely sent it to me and you send you yeah. send them to George or George. I have it, but I will, yeah. Yeah. Um, but I was discussing with um Glenn um what they're really interested in is actionable items. I don't think what Joe really would say the planning department we really wasn't looking at conservation issues as being one of the targeted things. Um there were it. there um, were a list of priorities that were developed and um some things were prioritized higher than some of the conservation things. We're interested in, you know, some open space issues. So. Um, uh, there is some, some uh, statute. The um, yeah, one of the primary issues that they that they. Um, the, the, the commission's going to look at as part of the update is the definition of open space and how the open space fits on our um, our on our open space map and, and and our open space mapping because part of it is that there are certain elements of state tax code that that property owners that are in open space and the open space map is in your POCD it, they can achieve a, a, a tax break of sorts it's got to meet the definition of forest or open space or ag and um, we need to take a closer look at that because we haven't done that in a while. Um, you know, I don't think there's a lot of new open pieces of open space to add necessarily, but I think it's it just it's in the definition, making sure that we that we agree on what's what what meets the definition of open space and what doesn't. I think what I was uh, speaking with Glenn Shoulder is um, even though the, the conservation wasn't really one of our priorities to look at this time, I think. We can help move it forward to be more of an issue 
I commented earlier, oftentimes this commission has commented at the tail end of the process rather than at the beginning. Yes, so I think that that's an important point. We are at the very beginning of the process, actually. You know, uh, you know, part part of my update was going to remind everybody, please take the survey. If you haven't taken the survey yet, there's a survey on the town website, right in the main banner. But we were right about 500 responses uh, today, which is fabulous um, in, in, in about a three-week time period that, that got us through Thanksgiving. So we'll push that out a couple of more times that um, we'll close it on, on December 31st. And, you know, hopefully we can inch towards maybe I think 700 was, was our initial goal. I always get a little bit of greedy when it went to 500. I'm like, well, we get 700. We get 700. Why can't we get 1,000? So, we're, we're, you know, again, friends and family, push it out to, 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 to your social networks on your, you know, on Facebook or whatever you're on. It's, I did start to take it, and I did find some of my questions like, oh, well, we really want to answer that the way the survey said. So, because, you know, it was, but. I, I, I mentioned that with Jenny Chalder, and um, I also said that um, I'm hoping that they incorporate the survey that was done for the open space department, the, the parks and record open space thing that was just done last year, because there was a very good indication of that. We're aware of that. Yeah. 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 And so, I, well, let me just finish that, my, my, my little point. Sorry, Madam Chair. Um, you're at the beginning, and so so now is the time to do it. I, and I think the, the, the plan is, is, is I think we'll, we will host a, a full public you know, our kind of first community session at the end of January, where we'll, we will discuss with, with the consultant, um, we'll kind of release the findings of the survey, what, you know, what, what did Simsbury residents say, and, and what, are, what are the notions and, and the kind of the feelings on development issues and conservation issues and open space issues. Um, and it, I think at that meeting, we'll do some, we'll, we'll probably do some planning exercises. But again, that's the, that's really that first public input piece. Yeah. So we have, Time and I think I, I do think Glenn is open to coming back and, and meeting with this commission. But I, again, I I think we'll we'll want to do that and, and and provide that feedback to the to the planning commission who are the the kind of the owners of the process as early as possible. Well, it's good. I, I know Glenn um, said he was interested in coming back. I think on the seventeenth. I think he said third, and I told him the seventeenth might be better. Okay, that's what I thought. All right. So yeah, unless he. Because yeah, I mean, I'm I'm on a plane from South Carolina back here on the second. Who knows if I, you know, I don't want to be yeah, late. Yeah. I don't want to be late for that. Like, mm -hmm. Problematic that time of year. So, um, so that would be good to hear from him about the process. Um, that will give us some time for all over the holidays to look at the POC. Yeah. We know you all want to do that. Um, and there's no reason I, you know, and, and there's no reason I can't do a session with you on on all of your comments and, and kind of facilitate that discussion. So, you know, I'm, I'm worried about. I, mean, I, only, I only get so many public meetings with Glenn as part of the contract, so yeah. I'm, I'm happy to do it and quite capable of doing it. All so. Right. so I know I've made some comments, and Aaron's um, been making comments, we can incorporate them. Um, and you know, if anyone yeah. else would like to look at it, we can put it in. Sure. Maybe we can discuss those at the next meeting. Speaking of which, um, when do we decide whether or not we'll have another meeting? Erosion equipment control. I don't, unless there's anyone else has any comments about PSC. Really important thing, when I was speaking with them, we had a lot of discussions of what, what could be going forward, but we really need actionable items. And I think a lot of the actionable items will come back to us. So I think it's both, you know, really is both actionable items and a and a and a, and a system to system to work them yes. and, I, and I think that's the, in part that's probably staff's responsibility to help help facilitate and drive that a little bit but there's got to be willingness on 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 this body to really you know pick two three four items you know over over a period or a quarter and, and really work on them and, and agree to work on them. and one of one of the things in the POCD was the dark sky initiative and that one did have an actionable item that the zoning commission was to come up with regulations for dark sky. Um, one of the things I did last week was I put together, I think Newtown had some policy um, positions for Newtown and then I, the Stanford that had some regulations and I kind of merged them together. I tried to send them out, but I was having great problems with my getting things, things kept bouncing back to the town. So we can get Can you just them. send me where those sites are, where those links are, yeah. and I'll find them? Well, I've got, oh, okay. I've got them. I've got the, the, the two originals and then I merged them together okay. into okay. So um, perhaps we can discuss that at our next meeting as well. Or, 
call the meeting. Okay. Because I think it's lovely when other towns are doing things, and then we can just sort of stop or you know, adapt them to sure, sure. their thing. So we should look at those next time too. Okay. So hopefully my email will work because I know I sent these all out in a flurry and I didn't think about that. I couldn't quite figure out that. But uh, the next meeting is more than about that. But I think that's something as a conservation commission we can sort of encourage. Because uh, so it is an actual item in the PSC. I think it has been for two versions of the PSC. So. Let me get the zoning commission through the cannabis stuff, and then we'll work on, <laughs> then we'll work on some other stuff. Well, we, can, we can have it queued up. That, have, that's taking a lot of time, right? First, we have to look at it, and then we can get it queued up for them. So something that you know we can work on in the new year. I wanted to, I, I had mentioned this to, to the group a, a long time ago, months ago. Um, it's, there's a quirk or a, an inconsistency in the, in the town charter and the town code that gives some decision-making responsibility or gave decision-making responsibility to the Conservation Commission as it relates to erosion and sediment control plans. That does not match the state enabling legislation for the, um, the kinds of things the Conservation Commission can do. And it also conflicts with the state law, which really says it's the zoning commission for site plan items and it's the planning commission for uh, for, for subdivision items. And so uh, we're, we're just working through a process to, to take an item to the, the Board of Selectmen to remove that chapter. Um, but since it has your name in it, I, I didn't want to just do, uh, certainly not tell you that that's, that's the plan and the process. Um, we have talked all along that no matter when there's a big, a large project, a big project, or a significant project that has open space components, that has big erosion and set up control plans, there's no reason we can't bring that to you for referral and review, and we should do that. Um, I don't know that we've had one that kind of meets those, those, those necessarily uh, those parameters in a while, but but I do think we should effort to do that. That sounds good. So quite often we don't get the referrals yeah. that we so I don't have any any particular update. We've been, we've been pretty busy. I, I you know I, we, we know that um, you know Savannah Nicole is is no longer with us, and we're quite disappointed by that. And we wish her luck, and um, we'll, we'll be working on uh, you know filling that that, that position and uh, working on the department. But uh, I think this would be the time if you want to talk about uh, your your December. All right. So next December meeting. So, we don't have any so and no applications in. Um, and even if, if if we get one in, we, we, you know, we, we'll take a look at it and you know deem it accepted, and then figure out at your January third meeting what you could do with it. So I think I, the January third meeting, I think they're going to chance with the city yeah. and 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 yeah. make comments and yeah. uh, that we have something to discuss. So, right. so do we have an agreement that we will take off the December twentieth meeting? I, I would get a motion and a vote. Yeah. What we cancel that meeting? Yes. That yes. So I, I, I move that uh, we cancel the December twenty. Most likely, no business. Second. All in favor? Aye. Right. Um. I, I do have one more thing. Um. I don't know if Savannah Nicole had gotten with Caitlin and Kyle to do um, just to do a little introduction. Has she done that? Yeah. Did she yeah. do that with you? She yeah. took you through everything? Yes. Great. Nice okay. Oh, that's right. She was making the books. I totally forgot. I know she, I remember she made the books. Okay, so we're good. I just want to make sure that we did we did that. And then we do have the training. If, if when everyone is done with the POCP, if they have any time for that, they have to be online. That website. It's always available. Yes. Yeah. I'll send it out tomorrow. We'll send that out. Yep. Yes, sir. Hard to find. Hmm. On the deep site, it's it's not easy to find. Yes. I know. Surprise. Shock. Yes, that's true. <laughs> no, Is that on the commissioner resource share folder? It, it, it might be, but I, I, I'll if it, I'll resend the live link so everybody has send it the live in an email. They're going to be busy with the POCB. <laughs> yeah, it's 
I mean, it's not a short amount of time. It's mm -hmm. several, several hours yeah. to take. Right. Yeah. Well, if there, there is nothing more, um, I'll take it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye